I just put a bolt in there with these two nuts so the, sleeve, the threads wouldn't get buried. The nut wouldn't bury itself in there. Though. Sorry. Scratch that whole one. Let's start over. Welcome to an episode of South Omaha Speed, where we're going to be working on the 33 Ford Coupe, the very first project uh, of starting to build a car. I'm going to build a windshield frame for the opening. Um, back in 54, when they first built the car and they chopped it from a stocker to a hot rod, they never put a windshield frame in it. As far as I can tell from the photos, they just use a piece of Lexan that they kind of trimmed out around the opening and screwed it to the body. And I want to make a windshield frame that actually hinges out is the plan. Uh, at the hill climb uh, a couple years ago, the Hot Rod Hill Climb in Colorado, which is awesome. Uh, show if you haven't been there. But uh, a couple chopped coops with the windshield frames all cranked straight out. It looks so cool. So that's something I want to do on this. And I think it's just going to help trim that edge, you know, the opening better if it had a windshield frame versus just Lexan. Um, so the plan is to build a cage in this thing too at the end with a halo hoop and the A-post tubes that come down next to the dash and tie into the frame but that'll also allow me to hinge that uh, windshield frame at the top and, and give it some structure too and kind of tie things in a little better than just being sheet metal up here. They cut out the whole edge of the windshield opening is gone it's just sheet metal lip. So anyway uh, that's the plan and uh, Hope you come along with the journey and check it out. Um, excited to get started and lots of work to do. So thanks for tuning in. So I got the windshield frames lined up over here. Uh, I've been kind of collecting for the project. Um, the one on the far right, the black one with the glass in it is a 33, 34, I believe, frame, good shape. The one in the middle without the bottom, I believe is the same. They both have a curved top. This edge along here has got a nice uh, curve to it, which matches the body. Um, when they cut that opening, they actually put that curve in it here. So I'm thinking one of those two tops is what I'm going to use. I like that middle one because it's got the patina. This one here, this one on the left, I'm not sure if it's 32. It's got the brackets on the sides here for the adjustable arms that you can kind of swing it out at your desired uh, tilt swing out and uh, so I know it's not 33 34 it could be 32 I don't know but uh, the top of it's flat top of it's flat here so probably not going to work for this body but I do like the bottom of it uh, so I think I'm going to use that bottom on the middle top there and try to start with that and see what I can come up with here so that's the plan uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the bottom off this one on the left and then uh, kind of chop it down to see how it's going to lay in this channel here. Because I know um, it could stick out here. And, I, and it probably will. I'm thinking about actually maybe cutting out the inside of that little channel on the frame. And seeing if I could cut it out to maybe lay flatter. To see if I can get it to go all the way down in this channel. Instead of trying to set it up on top. My original plan was to set it up on top. And then have it come uh, flush in the corners. But... Um, We'll see how I, maybe if I can take away from some of that channel on the inside to get it to lay here flush and probably have to notch it out in the center to get to fit if it even got enough material there to do it. So, so these windshield frames are actually put together with these little brackets in here with screws, these set screws, fine thread screws that go into these brackets inside the frame in the corners. And I'm not having very much luck getting those out without heat. I did get one out. But I'm going to try the torch here on this other one uh, to see if I can get it moving. Um, the way I'm going to chop the frames down anyway, I'm not going to even probably be in the corners on the bottom one. I might be a little bit in the corner, but as far as the top goes, that whole bottom is going to go away. So I could probably cut it apart and uh, probably make a little bracket on the inside that kind of, to make it work uh, that will screw back together once the glass is put in, but uh, I'd rather take it apart like it's supposed to be. I hate to cut it up, but uh, we'll see here how it goes. I might just uh, cut it apart and uh, figure out how to attach this corner after everything's chopped and fit later, but uh, let's see how it goes here.
Yeah, it's just not happening. So, um, I don't know if there's a better way to do this. I just don't know how to get them out, but uh, I think I'm just going to end up cutting it. You know, like I'm doing a restoration of this car, and we're kind of building a race car here. So, um, I guess I'm just going to cut this frame apart and figure out later how to maybe build some brackets in here that are uh, attack them, weld them to the frame with threads in them, and then I can make a bracket on top of that to help attach the corner. Um, figure out and get there, I guess. I guess first thing I want to do is just get to see if I cut it apart and get it to fit inside the open and decent. So. So as you look at the bottom of that frame, leaning back at the same angle, you see how much that comes back up on top of the cowl, which I think is just gonna gonna have to be that. Um, if I don't do it that way and put it out here on the front, I'm trying to get this to sit down from the original lip. It just ain't gonna happen. Just by the way that uh, them not relieving the cowl here and bringing everybody back on the same plane is, is gonna make the make it tough to make this right. And uh, <clears throat> most people will tell you this is not the way to chop a car. And if I was chopping a car today, I wouldn't do it this way by leaving the nubs here, obviously. But this is the way they did it in 54 and we're not changing the top because it's, it's cool. But we're just gonna make this windshield frame fit this opening and I just have it sit up on top. <laughs> You know, or it's, it won't lay flat in there now because it's still too long. I got to trim it back for both sides to fit inside uh, the two the two posts. But uh, those will be my next cuts. I think is to get it to fit in there and uh, see what we got on this radius here. If worst comes to worst, I could probably pie cut this on each side and make it match this better. But we'll just see once it fits in there uh, how it looks. Okay, so we got this piece fit pretty much trimmed to where I want it um, it's gonna lean back farther than I thought it was gonna lean back but uh, it's gonna be okay because that rubber will clear this little void in here it'll help fill it and so eighth inch space all the way through there for the rubber and then over here I decided uh, I thought about should I cut this thing in the center it's about a inch and a half I got to take out of this thing to make it narrower to fit the opening in the car but as you look down it you can see it's got a crown in it and if I cut it in the middle and cut it and weld it back together it's gonna have somewhat of a point in the center so I'm gonna cut off each end and then I'm gonna clamp this to the car the center piece in the center and then I'll fit these corners uh, individually to fit this piece and the piece that's already on the car. Okay, so bottom frame of the frame is in. It's just sitting there. I got that top frame. I cut off the corners here. Got both ends off. Got it centered up. Found the center line of it. Found the center line of the roof. Um, centered up to the cowl here. So now um, the next move is going to be to start cutting and fitting these pieces here. get them to fit and I got this piece here that I cut off earlier off the leg that'll help me find my angle and scribe it on the, this piece here when I find out uh, how long I need to make it but so we're getting closer it's a brand new day here in the shop uh, working on the corner pieces still of this windshield frame uh, last night I kind of marking on them 
and chase them around. The marks weren't quite matching up, and I was having a problem figuring out what angle the each of them were going to be at because this isn't exactly cut the same leaf side. It's close, but it's not exact. Um, <clears throat> so I got everything center lined up. Uh, the bottom rail was kind of tipping a little bit back and forth. It was rocking. So I taped some quarter inch nuts here uh, in, the, in each corner of the bottom rail to keep it from tipping so it lay in there flat. And then I made this piece here out of some aluminum, just hand bent it. And Basically, I got my marker lines drawn on my blue tape. I can lay this in there and, and check the angle. It allows me to check the angle to make sure each side matches. So I got a little more leeway on that side. I think I'm going to cut this one first and then match that one to it. Uh, which with this piece it should be pretty easy to do that um, to make sure they're the same angle because I want to look symmetrical when you look at it from the front so they both match of course because you'll be able to see it if they don't um, anyway so yeah getting closer should have these cut here um, and fit here in the next hour or so I would hope get them close and then I'll TIG weld I'll probably TIG, TIG weld everything together uh, in one piece, the complete frame, even this bottom, even bottom corners, even though it will come off at the end of the day, but to get everything straight and flat so when the glass is in there, it's all one plane, I'll probably tack it right now, and then I'll flip it over and make the brackets uh, to make it detachable. And I'm thinking about, I found some uh, 5 sixteenths nuts that can slide right up in this rail. So once this is all cut into 45, I'll drill some holes in here and slide these nuts up inside there and drill some holes in the side here and tack them in. So you'll just see these threaded holes basically once these nuts are slid in there. I'll make them both match and then I'll make a bracket that welds to this and it comes up with a tail with two holes in it and I can just run bolts in from the bottom to attach it in and the, the glass, the glazer, the glass guy, he can uh, <clears throat> take the rail on and off to fit the glass in there when it comes time to have that cut. So instead of using those small little Ford set screws uh, that I couldn't get out, was unsuccessful, uh, I thought I would just go ahead and use some 5 16 uh, probably bolts. So uh, that's the plan with that. Uh, it's probably not, uh, it's, yeah, it's probably not the right way to do it as far as a Ford restoration, but we're not restoring a 33 Ford here. We're building uh, the old race car back the way it was and trying to put a windshield frame in it, so using Lexan. So uh, anyway, that's the route I'm taking. So I guess next is to get to cutting. Well, we got the one side in, trimmed up, sitting in there just not tacked, but pretty close. Some variations here where it kind of dips down. Of course, I don't think it's necessarily truly flat yet like the glass will be when I get it tacked up and get it flat so the glass will fit in there on that flat plane. So that'll probably come down a little bit, but there's going to be some variations in here I'm going to have to kind of lower or raise once the windshield's frames completed, welded, and the rubber's in it. Uh, but anyway, so uh, one down, one more to go. Hope to make it look at least as good as that one, I hope. So, more to come. So the next step, I want to take this uh, sanding disc here and run it through all the grooves that the glass is going to go in on the channels, both sides down and up clean all that out making sure there's no imperfections everything's smooth and then I'm gonna clean up all the ends take all the burrs off them deburr them file the inside of all the holes make sure they're clean where this welds the top piece I'll bevel this and the, the edge of the top piece as well where I weld them together so it'll be nice fill that with weld 
And then I'm going to take, before I put it together, next step here, after I get everything all cleaned up, I'm going to clean that out and then slide a couple 5 16 nuts in here like we talked earlier, drill some holes, slide the nuts in, and then drill some small like 3 16 holes here on the side so I can tack those nuts in so you'll just see threaded holes here so I can make them little brackets to hold this to the crossbar piece, the, the middle piece on the of the windshield. So here is the the corner pieces of the windshield frame and I got some blue masking tape on here. I just uh, put that on there so my pencil marks will show and uh, just punched where I want to put the holes at. These are the big holes for the bolts. I'm using 5 16 which is probably overkill but um, these neoprene 5 16 just fit this channel so good as far as height and width. I decided to go with them I guess and I had them. So and then these small ones here on the side are just going to be little holes to fill with weld to keep that nut in place. Um, and I guess, yeah, that neoprene is probably going to melt when I weld it, but it'll just melt down. So we shouldn't get the threads. Um, so this one's ready to be drilled. This one here has already been drilled. You can see the, the holes here on the sides for the weld. I already got one 5 16 nut pushed in there in the hole. And then this one here will just slide in like this. Maybe. Shouldn't take much here to get this thing going. Okay. And then I'll uh, I'll put some bolts in there, tighten them up, and then go ahead and weld them in place. I'll get the other one drilled and get to this stage, weld them both up, and then I'll be tacking the windshield frame together. So I got the two pieces here. This one's ready to go, this one will be next. I, um, I got the two holes here, the relief holes, so I can fill with weld to uh, weld those nuts inside so they won't move around. I got 5 16 bolts in there. These 3 8 nuts are just slid over there because I didn't have short enough bolts to make it work. So I just used them to fill up the, the space on the threads so they wouldn't bottom out in the bottom of the neoprene side of the nuts I'm using neoprene because I didn't have any, they fit well, so that's what I used. Um, anyway, so I'll weld these up and then uh, I guess we'll tack windshield together tonight too. This is the plan. It's another day here at South Omaha Speed, day three of the windshield frame saga. It continues. Um, getting closer. Uh, I got it all ready to go pretty much. All the joints are cleaned. I got them buffed down all the edges so it should take weld well. Um, tonight I'm working on making these little pins here. Uh, taking a 3 8 bolt, cutting the threads off, cutting the head off, shining it up, getting the zinc coating off. Uh, so it won't uh, contaminate the weld. And I got one in this side already. Just It just slides in. It's a little loose, but it's, it slides on there. And then I kind of buff back a little bit of this corner here so you can uh, fill that with weld. As I'm welding, I can fill that up and tie all three pieces together, um, make it stronger. I don't know if it's really needed or not, but uh, it's just like a pretty easy piece to put in for a little extra insurance and uh, make it stronger. Probably just fine if I didn't use it, but what the heck. It didn't take much time, so anyway, uh, next thing I'm going to do, get everything clamped back in the car, in the opening, get it all clamped up, get it all tacked in, see how that goes, and then uh, probably end up laying it face down on the floor and putting some weight on it and welding up the backsides. 
so it doesn't pull around once I get the shape uh, inside the car, get it tacked up, and then put it on the ground. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Well, she's welded up on the outer edge here. Yeah. Office guy trying his best. I'm not a big grind it weld guy. I like to leave my welds if I can and I don't know. It's not too bad. I mean, it's kind of crude. <laughs> Like the rest of the car, hot rod crude. I don't know. Maybe I'll buff them down. Um, we'll just have to see. But plenty of strength there now to hold the shape of the frame. And uh, as far as this area you hear from rocking around and moving, so it's all solid. Got her flat. And uh, probably done for the night. Um, I guess somewhat successful. Uh, it fits. Feels good to have this first part done. Um, I still gotta make the brackets for the corners for those uh, nuts I welded in there uh, to make that strong and tie it in. So when the glazer puts the glass in, he can put the bottom rail in. And I hope to get them in there so everything's on the same plane so the glass goes in nice and that bottom rail goes on once it's cut. I've never had a windshield cut before, um, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Call around and figure out who can do that. But uh, yeah, anyway, thank you for uh, watching. This is the first video of the actual building process of the car, and um, man, a lot more to go. I'm still trying to source that engine, trying to source the rear end. I, got, I actually have one at my dad's, a banjo I'm going to throw under it and set it up. I got a 301 quick change. I'd like to build for it, but I might just get that banjo for now. We'll see. Uh, yeah, lots to do. So next pro part of the project is probably pull the hood off of it, which is just wired on anyway, and probably bob the front end, cut the, the uh, frame horns off, put a three-inch piece of tubing in there possibly, or a Model A cross member I have, which would make it considerably lower than the 33, 34 cross member that's in it. Uh, you could gain like two inches, you lose two inches of height, I think, if you put a model in. Um, but I kind of think on that a little bit and kind of get on the internet and look at some things to uh, see what may make the most sense on that. Uh, it appears in the original photos they made use a Model A cross member, but uh, like the original frame is gone, so just go from there, I guess. Um, thanks for watching and uh, appreciate it. Um, learning as I'm going. Hoping not to move the camera too fast, so apologize on that. I went back and looked at some of the footage that I shot on this particular project on the windshield and I can see I needed to slow down with the camera, probably get the camera up a little higher, get rid of my chubby chin, um, not getting any younger, none of us are. So uh, anyway, thank you and we'll catch you next time on South Omaha Speed. Yeah.